just going to summarise now what I've read. So, I've, feedback I've got back is that more than 12 hours from Dan Key. Zixin is agreeing with the same, 12 hours. Zix, uh, yes, uh, Lord Dashwood says 22 hours. Um, Dan Key's <laughs> suggesting you should sleep some more. Well, yeah, if it's 22 hours a day, certainly. Uh, okay, eight hours of sleep, that's good. Yes, Dan Key's right, but Dan Key's, uh, um, Camel's name has changed now to Lord Dashwood, and that's how he seems to be addressed as now, apparently. So, folks, number of hours, there's quite a lot of hours per, per day, you know, using a, a, a VDU or computer, so a few things just to mention about that. Generally speaking, it's advised to take a 10-minute break from the screen every hour. I guess the general advice given for just the computer usage, that's just for the eye itself. The kind of things, factors to consider by using a desk for too long is to consider that the impact on the body. And normally, like if you, an employer has an entitlement to make sure if you are using using um, technology at work, for example, then there are certain adjustments that they can make. The other thing is, somebody who aren't working could also um, be using a computer anyway for work here in SL or work at home or just maybe your students or there's other things you're doing on the PC too. So there's a few things I'm just going to mention to you all here about being comfortable while using um, technology. Okay. So one of them is that your forearm should be approximately horizontal and your eyes should be at the same height as top of the screen. You need enough workspace to accommodate all your documents and you can have a document holder to help with awkward neck and eye movements. You can arrange the desk and screen to avoid glare. So watching glare is one thing. It's turning down the brightness of the screen, which also can affect your eyes. You need space under your desk to move legs and avoid excessive pressure from the edge of seats on the back of legs and knees. Some workstations are much better designed for a sitting, so um, there's things you can do. Um, you can give space in front of your keyboard to help rest, rest your hands and wrists when not typing. So one thing that you guys are using keyboards for more than eight hours a day, you might find you get problems in your wrists and in your hands or some sort of stiffness lock, locking up and that kind of experience. Any of you experienced that before? know from one of you yeah <clears throat> I certainly used to have it when I was typing when I was typing a lot of documents at work I should write a lot wrong with long reports I would very soon get a kind of a lockup happening in my wrists and hands which was a very important sign to stop typing too much certainly as it is mentioned you can reduce your screen brightness and um, surrounding brightness to also make it easier on your eyes otherwise the sort of symptoms could be things like headaches and neck strain. So folks, this is some general guidance there for using a BDU. Now we are kind of like a little bit unlimited in SL, so I just thought, you know, there's not a huge number of us today because I just moved the meeting a little bit earlier, but I thought, if you don't mind, how do you folks feel about going for a run around the academy? with me. It's going to be virtual, you don't need to get up and run around for real, but I'm going to take you for a run around the academy. You're going to follow me, and we're going to go in pursuit of me, and we're going to leg it around the block. Okay? Some of you might fall in the sea, some of you might get completely lost, but generally speaking, just follow the track around the edge, and we're going to just experience what running feels like in SL, okay? And how you run. Do you all know how to run? You just use your up arrow, and you up twice, and that gets you running. Danke's going to demonstrate. Now, Danke, give us a demonstration, please, of running. A little short sprint, perhaps. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go for you. Follow me, folks. I'm not going to be the leader here, right? I'm going to lead. I can't hold a big balloon above me or anything, but if you just follow me, we're going to go for a jog around the block. So you've got you all. It's a bit of an uphill climb here, right? So we're going to do the hills last. We're going to be completely knackered by the time we get to that bit. So here we go. We're going to go for a run around the block. So those of you who can't run and have limitation in movement, Oh, hello there. Sorry, sorry, Lord Dashwood, your, your highness. Um, just follow me. Uh, running this way. Here we go, folks. Up we go, up the mountain. Whee! Don't fall in the water. 
Just check you're all following me. Are you behind me? Excellent. Doing very well. Oh dear, you're going to catch up with me. That's a bit of a race here. We can try and get ahead of me if you want. Giving you a bit of a chance. Round the back, round the back. Let's keep running, everybody. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Round the block. Let's go, round the block. Oh, my phone's ringing. One second, but I've been taken over. Oh no. <laughs> I'm like. Right, keep running, everybody. Keep running, keep running. We're going around here. This is the first lap. And um, no one is ahead of me right now. And I know no one's falling to... Oh, my God, Lord Dashwood's taking the lead. Lord Dashwood's taking the lead, everybody. He's ahead of me. Oh, my God, he's a fast runner. God, he's miles ahead. Come back. Wait. He's fallen in the sea. Oh, he's gone and he's taken the water. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Come on, folks. <laughs> Come on. Let's go around the block. There we go. We're getting a bit of a sweat now, I think. The old heart's going. Oh, who's in the lead now? Oh, look. Someone. Danke, is that you in the lead? Oh, my God. Danke, you're running like a lunatic in front of me. You're going crazy fast, my friend. I'm going to knock you off to the side now. I'll put you in the water. I'm just going to bump you with my elbow. True blokey style. It's like chariots of fire, this. Okay, keep going. Keep going. Right, final lap, folks. We're going to hit 1,200 metres there. This is like chariots of fire. I need to use music next time. Maybe I'm the survivor. Rocky. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> oh, I'm followed by some little furry thing following me. What's this? Keep running. I'm in the lead again, folks. Last lap. Come on. Last lap. Last lap. Oh my god, you've taken a head. I've made a mistake. Shit. Oh my god. I'm, la I'm at the back. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm the last. Oh my god, you're gonna beat them, beat me complete. Oh my god, I've lost. Who's first? When you get to the beach, it's the winners. Who's first to the beach? The first to the stand is the winner. And it's gonna be Lord Dashwood. And he's won. And I'm in the second, though I'm actually last. Shit. Anyway, so folks, let's talk about that. <laughs> I have to say, Venus is actually on the line right now and she's walking. I'm listening to you, right? Right, folks. <laughs> so, as let's talk about that experience. Um, I'm out of breath. <laughs> and some comments. Danny, you feel good about this? Yeah, I thought so. And um, oh, in RL that would have killed my lungs. I, I know. Uh, no, Lord Dasher, we can't hear you. But I would say the winner, Danky, why are you doing upside down yoga? Okay. So I would say that. Um, <laughs> that the winner of the prize for the fastest runner of today is Lord Dashwood. And Lord, I'm going to give you a financial prize, actually, just because of that. I think you deserve that. 50 Linden. You beat me, you bastard. Right? So, <laughs> 50 Linden for you, my friend. On the, I think it's well-deserved. What do you reckon, Danky and uh, Zixin? Give them a bit of a prize for that, winning the um, right race. So, as you can see, although we virtually ran around because we're so lazy and spending 12 hours a day on our computers, um, that <laughs> I think that <laughs> you might find you actually felt a little bit like you did some real exercise. And why is that? Because apparently, similarly to when we dream, um, our mind, if it's thinking about exercise, actually some neurological activity happens, which is a bit like exercise. You don't get all the full physiological stuff, but Therefore, virtual exercise has a place, okay? Now, what also can happen is by doing this, it might you know, in, encourage you or inspire you to go for a run tomorrow if you can, or some kind of increase of activity or uh, you know, effort. So for example, um, Lord Dashwood, you walk on a treadmill, that's the most you can do with cere cerebral palsy, so you will do 1.3 miles per hour on a treadmill, which is great, so I would, you know, encourage you to keep doing that and then do it three days a week and you have also mentioned to me before that sometimes you, know, you, you do get you mentioned the, the mood thing before you know and mood is greatly affected by improved enhanced by physical exercise and activity okay and Danky's now going to run from work tomorrow yeah you'll run home mate how about that because if I finish work I'll be I'm running the hell out of that place where I work when I finish up you know Exactly. And Venus told me she's walking to work today, which is also going on there, you see. 
Well done, darling. Well done. Wonderful. You can run to work tomorrow because Danky's running to work tomorrow. All right, we're all going to run to work tomorrow. I'm back again, except my work is about 20 miles away, so if I even tried to run back, I would end up dead somewhere along, <laughs> on the, along the motorway. Um, oh, you have walked six miles in one day before. That's quite a lot, is it? That's fantastic. That's, I mean, walking outside, you can't really beat that. Countryside and that sort of thing. You got any countryside near you? Yes, yay or nay? Hmm. No countryside at all. Surely, Zixon. You could, where, where, where do you live? The desert? Must be something around you. Yeah, but I'm in the city as well, so there's there's green parks and stuff, isn't there? We're in New York City. I'm sure there's... Isn't there a park called... um, What's that park called? Central Park. Isn't that New York? Or am I thinking about some TV program here? Why, is it dangerous? Like there's heroin addicts and stuff in there. <laughs> Lord Dashwood, I, li I live in Miami. Well, oh, yeah, I would be careful around there myself, but um, at night, yeah. But do you not think um, you must have a park? I mean, surely there are parks, don't they? Can't believe New York doesn't have any parks in it. It has no parks. So I'm not going there. You got a few, right? So great. So let me would certainly encourage that. Now Venus has some amazing other exercise equipment, or yoga mats, but. I think we've forgotten to rest them, actually, dear. So we think about that at some point. I don't know if I've got yoga mat here or not. Let's see what I've got in my inventory, folks, for some more exercise stuff. Have I got any yoga mats in my inventory? Danke, you must have some. You've got yoga mats all over the place. Um, oh, here's one. Beginners. I've got one. There you go. And, um, I only have one. Where's Venus when I need her? Okay. <laughs> so, um, Lord Dashwood, here next to you is a yoga mat. Please feel free to do that. And Zixin, I'm trying to sort you out with something. Danky's got his own little portable yoga system there. Um, so, Danky, you got any yoga mats, mate? Handy. What are you doing, my friend? Oh, you can't do yoga without a lawsuit. Yeah, um, Lord Dashwood, if you click the mat a few times, you'll get a few other options with that, I think. Thank you, fantastic, thank you very much. Would much appreciate it. If you could just res it near Zixin, then, and yourself, and then you guys can take, how many have you got there? Oh, I see, Lord Dashwood, yeah, of course. Yeah, you've got to take it carefully there. Great, you got any more? Oh, thank you, Danky, thank you. Good man, what a hero. Oh, you hero, thank you so much. All right, folks, thank you. Maybe go for the same ones, like four of them, and I'll take the other one away, yeah? I'll go on this one over on the right-hand side. There you go. And there you go, folks. Right, here's the time for a bit of yoga now. Very good. That's excellent. Right, everybody, so, last part of this little thing. Now, 10 minutes or so of exercise. So... Let's talk about stretching next. So with stretching and that kind of, depending on how much mobility you have, you can choose the appropriate exercise for stretching without doing any damage to yourself. So I'm just going to choose the simplest one I can find. Not that one. Not that one. Definitely not that one. This one's not bad. Bending. That's quite painful. Not that one. What if I must quite a straightforward, easy one, you know? Um, about standing stretch. He's a really good match, Dan. Thanks a lot. Um. Stand stretch, I think, will be the one. Yes. Okay, folks, so let's talk about stretching. So we talked about the fact that you are all using, on average, 12 hours of PC use per day. That's pretty high. 
In fact, that's half your day is spent in front of a computer screen. It's quite worrying. And given you have like eight hours of sleep on average, or perhaps a little bit less than that, you're probably going to have about four hours of time when you're not in front of a computer. That's quite scary, isn't it? So what we can do is to try and break things up a bit is every, just in terms of your, your computer usage, is just trying to break this time up with some kind of physical movement so you don't get too stiff because if this continues over a long period of time like you know like years and years then you'll find that um, there'll be some kind of a problem accumulating over time so it could be lower spine back shoulders neck okay or your cervical vertebrae or your spinal vertebrae and it also can get down to also your legs as well and your arms can also get affected so given that's the case stretching exercises that are very simple are really helpful and to do these allows you well there's lots of schools of thought around this for example the vedic model or the you know there's a more there's lots of yoga models out there that around this sort of thing so working with stretching there's some very simple things you can do now just to check before i advise something inappropriate i need to just assess your mobility all of you so are you all fully, fully, fully able in terms of your body's capacity of bending? Like I'm bending here now in front of you. Can you do this particular bend that I'm doing here? This is a sideward bend. That's something you folks could do. Okay, come on, no problem. Come on, tell me how much flexibility you have. Yeah? And similarly for you, Zixin also, and Dan Key yourself too. Do you have any kind of limitations for flexibility? It's fine, we're doing exercise. Great deal, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done. Hey, darling. I'm just coming off voice for a second. You need a darling. I'm just checking in with this. Love you. Just come. You're very good. Very good, darling. It's great. Okay, honey. No problem. I think I'll be about another 20 minutes there. Okay. Oh, lost my voice, so if I can, folks, back again. Right, so um, just going to recap this. So I was just saying to you about the flexibility you have and the limitations you have around that. So I understand that as Ixin, no problem. Appreciated. So <clears throat> flexibility and mobility are really around us having limitation. Yeah, have, having limitation. So what we've got to do is be able to work with our limit limits but only to that particular amount we can go to, and not more than that. So for example, if you've got the ability to move your arms, or your legs, one or the other, then it's very effective to do something we can call, we call meridian exercises. Meridian exercises, I'll just describe some simple ones for you. This is, again, for computer users of you know, huge amounts of time, and also people who have limited, you know, a lot of limited mobility in terms of how much they can, but this is absolutely appropriate for them. So what you do, just to describe a few of these exercises for you, is with your hands, you take each digit of your hands, take your thumb, and you be able to rotate it five times clockwise and five times anti-clockwise. Now I'm hoping all of you can do this simple exercise with your right hand. Okay, there's limited movement. So if you took your right hand now and just took it away from the screen, you simply rotate your right hand 
clockwise and anti-clockwise five times each finger okay so you take your thumb your first finger second finger third finger fourth finger fifth finger after a while you'll start feeling a heat generating in your right hand okay and then you start and then once you've done that just tell me in the main chat you've done that activity you're rotating each finger clockwise and then anti-clockwise giving you a few minutes folks to just try that out um, so just hopefully you can get through your right hand okay I'm going to continue then to explain the rest of the right hand and what's involved with it so I think I'll put it into SL this instruction somewhere I'll just give you the object actually because this is something you can res yourselves Called Meridian Board. I can probably resist myself, so I'll just show you what this looks like. There you go, folks. Wonderful. So, what I'm showing you is, look on this little picture in front of you, is I've got here, um, I'm just going through some of the stuff around the hands right now, just because of limited mobility issues. So you look at number 10, it says hand stretching and funky, sorry, <laughs> funky rotating? Oh, dang it, you got me there. Hand stretching and finger rotating. So what you're doing is, you are taking away, working with your right hand, rotating your digits with fingers, and once that's done, you're going to do the hand stretching simply as the hand to be extended outward on the right hand side and clenched. Okay? So 10 and 11 are in a way in opposition to each other. So you do number 10, you stretch your hand out, and number 11, you clench your fist. Hand out, clench your fist. Hand out, clench your fist. Hand out, clench your fist. It's five times. When that's then done, you go down to number 12, which is wrist bending. That's putting your wrist up and down in a vertical axis, again five times. Then on to number 13, wrist rotation. So I'm just going to pause there for a moment. 10, 11, 12 and 13. So you can, you can rotate your wrist. Five ways clockwise, five ways anti-clockwise. When you've got to there, just say so in your main chat and then we'll look at the elbow bending and shoulder rotation. So uh, as time goes on, you'll start feeling more and more heat developing in your right hand. And what's happening here is you are opening up the, what they will say in the kind of the system of yoga, the um, channels of energy really in your hand. I'm going all mystical on you, I know. So, um, but you actually will feel it yourself. You know, so I'd like to know what you experience. You feel heat coming out of your hand. It is obviously blood circulation, it's energy. It's another way, but your, your blood will circulate better in that hand as well. And you just feel generally more vitality in that hand also. And quite often in the um, office work we do, we're un unaware of those things. Good. So, Kiss, um, Lord Dashwood, if you've had an opportunity to try this out, and also Zixin, have you been okay with this? Even whichever comfortable way you can you can do this exercise. I'm gonna message you, buddy.
great. So, um, Danky, great you've experienced that. And Zixon, you can do some of the things, which is wonderful. Lord Dashwood, be able to do any of these activities or exercises? No worries if you couldn't. So let me explain them the rest of the ones now. Sure, take your time. Just be slow about it. So the, the rest, I mean, we're doing the right hand right now. So then what would happen is you need to move to number 13 and 14 there. So wrist rotation and elbow bending. So wrist rotation, as I said, you'd go clockwise, anti-clockwise. I think you're just finishing that one off. But then I'm going to go into elbow bending and shoulder rotation. So number 14 is simply bend, is holding your arm up, like in the image here, and opening the hand out straight and touching then your shoulder, bending it again. So you're bending your elbow by opening your arm outwards and back again. Out and back again. Out and back again. That's five times. Once that's finished, this might require a bit more mobility, obviously, is then to take your shoulder, put your hand on your shoulder, like in picture number 15, and rotate your shoulder five times clockwise forward and five times backwards. <clears throat> so that's a kind of general, very simple, short bit of ex exercise and activity. It's not taking us long, maybe just 10 minutes or so. I started doing this. And once you've finished, you can, if you've enjoyed that, repeat it with your left arm in the same way, keeping those things. Now I've sent all of you a um, board, which is the Meridian board, and you can all res this wherever you are, and you can try this out. You know, having it on the screen there, and there are some instructions there too. At some point, if I got my bum off my seat, I'll try to get a yoga class going here. I'm quite keen on doing that actually discussing that with Venus some time back and I was thinking of doing this thing irregularly but we need some people it's not the same style as I think Cyprus does which used to do at Mystic Academy before but uh, this is Meridian um, based and it's for all for all kind of levels of mobility but also I would certainly want to use voice so if you folks think it's a good idea to do yoga classes in SL or this sort of exercise in SL I would really like to know and if we could promote it together and get people around here to do Maybe just 15 minutes of the men's group is always about doing some exercises. That would be great, right? Go for a run, have the race, see who wins. A bit of you know, competition's always good. <laughs> and then some exercises here afterwards, which would be pretty cool. I think it's a nice thing to do. I think it gets us moving. It gets us thinking about movement too. So that's wonderful. Very good. Six, and I hope that was helpful for you too. Um, but what we can now do, folks, as we're kind of like winding those, we're now going to just go and chill for a bit. I'm going to just take my um, you know, board up there. I want to just sit down now for a while on this board. Let's take the seating position. There's one called meditation, I think. Something like that. Meditate, there you go. And meditate one, I'm going to take. So I've taken meditation one. And chaps, to, to round this off, I'm going to share with you a audio stream. And it'll be a little mindfulness, like ten, five, ten minute relaxation. And that will close us down for the day. And then we can just chill out for a bit. So let me put away this board. I'd like you then to you know, check all of you could, could hear a stream. Could you all stream okay? Would that be all right? Great, let's get you all sitting down. Take meditation, please. I'm going to share with you a YouTube link um, that will last about eight minutes. Um, easiest way of playing it, really. Let me just find it online. You could work this on that. Just loading it now. I'm going to show a guided meditation with you shortly. My old friend Darkmind is there. Okay.
Okay, so we will have um, a opportunity here to hear a meditation file. So, would you prefer YouTube or Stream? YouTube means you could play in your own mode. Stream means I play it for you. Is Stream easier for you? Okay, well, what I'll try and do is to get it working, right? So, give me, bear me a moment. A lot of apps running right now. I'm trying to launch my DJ software and see if it works. Then we're all good. <laughs> 